I don't think you need an MBA level education, but I do think you need a really profound understanding of the business pressures and the costs uh, and, and resource allocation, which is different. And what I mean by that is uh, you really need to understand, even as a relatively junior reporter or editor uh, or copy editor, what the options are in terms of how you tell a story and how much those options cost because actually the, the the number of things you can now do are sort of almost kind of you know they're, they're almost unlimited in terms of you know do you tell it on video do you tell it on your own platform do you use distributed tools which are free what has the most impact um so i i i see a future where journalists have to have a really uh, detailed understanding of what the implications of their decisions about um, the tools that they use and how they tell stories impact actually on the cost of what they're doing. Uh, and I think it's all, I mean, I say this as someone who has a business as my sort of journalistic background. Um, if you understand business and particularly the business that you are in, it will just make you a better reporter. Charging for news online is incredibly expensive because actually, you know, building a paywall, maintaining it, um, having a subscription system, those are all really big costs. And it just doesn't make sense for most businesses to do that rather than look at the advertising model. Advertising's kind of supported a lot of news investment very well in the past, albeit in a mixed model through broadcast news, um, you know, newspapers, the, the actual cost of the physical object is rarely, if ever, covers the cost of the content. I think in most broadsheet newspapers it used to be 70% um, was advertising, 30% was cover price. It's now like 50-50, but you're still not covering the cost of the journalism. So it's a really complicated question, and I think it's very important that all news organisations play around with the idea of what's sustainable and what actually makes sense in terms of an economic model. I think what, what will be interesting in developing economies is, is how low-cost mobile technologies take the place of, of, of physical kind of print distribution. I think there will be places, a little bit like landlines for telephones, there will be places that will probably never see kind of like widely distributed newspapers. I mean, India is not one of them because that's got actually had a really sort of booming print market. Um, but the issue of access to news and the issue of how you connect your systems is not something that journalism can solve on its own. You know, these, are, these are issues for education, these are issues for government, uh, you know, these are issues uh, that go much more widely um, than just about journalism. Um, journalism is the mechanism for sort of delivering it. Uh, but I think that you, know, you need, a, you, you need a, if you like, a, a kind of a more holistic approach, probably sort of from government level. If you just post a story on the web, why isn't it digital journalism? Um, I used to have a phrase that I deployed at The Guardian, which I, I, I stole from our uh, chief technology strategist, which is being of the web, not just on the web. And I think what uh, you're describing in terms of uh, what's described in terms of a story that sits on the, <laughs> sits on the internet and does nothing um, is not really digital journalism because it doesn't acknowledge the presence of conversation and reaction around it. It doesn't acknowledge the fact that uh, stories change all the time and need to be updated. It doesn't acknowledge the fact that there are sources out there that can be linked to. It doesn't acknowledge the fact that once you press publish these days, there is a process involved in journalism which goes beyond the actual publishing of the story, and that may well be uh, curation, it may well be sending a link to the story to other blogs, it may well be engaging with commenters, um, it may well be updating the story. You know, once you, digital journalism is about creating a you know, living sort of atom of news rather than a finished article and that's absolutely the key difference. The skills you need are much more those of a sort of, if you like, a bartender or, or a retailer. Everyone who comes to your article and leaves a comment on it is kind of like a, you know, is, is like somebody wandering into your shop or your bar. And some people are just there to make trouble and you don't want them there and you have to find a way of removing them without upsetting everybody and calling the police. Um, 
And the other people who are there, you really want to kind of, you know, make sure that they are, that you're engaging with them, that you're not, you know, that, 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 and because if you do this, you know, if you do it well, it does undoubtedly improve your journalism. You know, you are likely to find, find out things that you didn't know before. You're likely to be fed uh, story or context that you pos possibly wouldn't have come across otherwise. Um, you're likely to aggregate a much better audience for your work, which, you know, you can't monetize anything unless you have an audience. Um, you build loyalty, you build following, etc., etc., etc. The problem, I think, for journalists is that they're often being asked to do this in an unrealistic way, given all the other pressures of their work, which is a management issue about understanding how journalists should spend their time. I think that the, the difference probably certainly with The Atlantic um, and The Guardian uh, and as I say you know other publications as well which I think have been successful is engaging with the web audience on its terms and not wanting it to be something other than it is. In other words not sort of you, you have to lose the print mentality at that point um, and that I think is why it's successful. The other thing which is simple and not really talked about that much is that I suspect that they have, I don't know, but I suspect they have great technologists at the and, and great creative developers at the Atlantic and I suspect that they are heavily involved in editorial conversations because that is the other thing which totally makes online success which is having an integrated approach where you hear and you take notice of people who are expert in as I say, what are really journalistic skills but have their basis you know, in, in, in coding rather than writing. There is this sort of completely false, um, I think, impression given that the things that really work on the web, I mean, yes, there's, kind of, you know, there's a huge audience for instant celebrity driven search engine optimized stuff but if you look at kind of you know audiences over time a lot of the really big web audiences do actually gravitate to the higher quality content if you produce the best thing about x subject or y subject on the web you will get a big audience for it and i think that you know as the news business begins to realize this it should get the publishing sort of cycle nailed in a much more sensible way where it's providing people with live you know real-time updates but it's not f forcing out lots of kind of you know instant and not particularly great articles um, where it's actually kind of if you like the middle economy of news which is is really the, that problematic bit that we're talking about you know it's never going to disappear but it, it should become squeezed and so you have the you know the instant update which everybody wants everybody wants to know how many miners have been saved right now you know but the other bit of it, which is the enduring bit, which is the analysis, the longer reported piece, the multimedia kind of, you know, sort of story that you tell over time, the database, uh, you know, you have to produce those in a, in, a, in a high quality way to actually attract and hold an audience.